Welcome, everybody. We are live again. What it's about Jess's Wednesday? favorite day of the week. It, your, not yours? It's mine, too. Oh, man. <laughs> I just, that, that's sad. Um, everyone's favorite day of the week. So, And we're continuing our frag build, which is always a lot of fun. Um, like. Yes, yes. <laughs> like, share, subscribe, you guys. Hit the notifications. Um, we're live on both Facebook and YouTube. Keenan's going to drop that intro. We'll see you in a second. And we're back. All right. Yes. Grab your drinks. We're Cheers. hanging out. We're yes. talking reef tanks. The best. Yep. And we're continuing on with the frag build, and we are on week. <laughs> Keenan? What week are we? What week are we? We're on week six. We're on week, week six. six. Yeah, so we're six weeks into this frag build. If you guys don't know about the frag series, it's an amazing tank. It's our shallow reef build. Uh, so definitely check that out on our website. Um, you know, just there's a lot of really great people in here that have been in here waiting for the stream to start. So die, hard. We, yeah, die, die hard. Die hard. So I'm giving away you guys that have been in here chatting with us for a while now uh, two free T-shirts. So it's, it pays to... Woo! To, uh, Some shirts, all yeah, right. To hop in here early. So you guys have been in here with us. I got two free t-shirts. We got some newer shirts made. These are nice and super soft. Tri yeah, blend or something, the, right? Yeah, tri blend next level t-shirt. Um, kind of like in a dark gray. Good all stuff. Right, give away two of those and four. Yeah. So on YouTube, we got Granny Reefer. Woo! Congratulations. Email or call us support at waterboxaquariums.com. Give them your shirt size. We'll get that out to you. Congratulations, we also got, Granny Reefer, and we got to give Facebook some love. We got Brandon Bradford. So Brandon, congratulations! congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Got two shirts out there. Enjoy. We're giving um, away all sorts of stuff. And Jess. what else? Um, yeah, we haven't even said what's happening later in the show for a yeah. giveaway. So you guys got to stick around because we are giving away a Waterbox Aquariums gift card, fifty dollars gift card, yes. and this and it's valid. We, I get a lot in the comments, Jess, that we don't give any love to the UK or the EU. So mm -hmm. I'm giving this gift card. I don't care if you live in the United States or Europe or UK. All right. Um, we're giving you guys a $50 gift card to shop our store in those regions. So definitely stick around till the end for that. That's always a lot of fun. So yeah. stick around for that. We'll have a winner on that one later. And today we're continuing on with the frag. And we get to do water testing today because um, the tank's been up and running for mm -hmm. two weeks now. We're cycling it and then adding some inverts to it as well. Yep. So. It's starting to get to the it's starting to get to the livestock part, but we got to make sure that the water is conditioned and in, and in the right state to put these animals in it, yep. which we have been doing for a couple of weeks already, right, Jess? Yeah, so the, it's been up and running for two weeks, so we've been adding bacteria, um, you know, testing along the way and making sure that as we get closer to having not just inverts, but the fish and the corals that are coming soon, that it's very stable and ready for them so they don't have any issues with that. Mm -hmm. um, and then for the frag build, in case anyone who hasn't really followed along so far, there is a giveaway attached to this one. Yes. A very big giveaway um, yes. where you can do lots of different entries. We are, um, actually it's being sponsored by Worldwide Corals for the livestock, so lots of goodies on that if we have the website for it. Yeah, so guys, you got to check this out. If you head over to waterboxaquariums.com, um, you're going to find that little blue bar there at the top. You can click on that. You can sign up. I think there's about eight different ways to get gain entries um, by, you know, subscribing, following us on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, all that good stuff, as well as Worldwide Corals. Um, and I want to mention something this week as well, because we haven't really touched on it. But for those water box lovers and family in Europe, and uh, we do have, we are giving away the frag in Europe as well. What? The yeah, giveaway so, is in there yes. as well. All so right. if you're in Europe, you guys are in luck. This series is for you too. If you head over to waterboxaquariumseu.com, you can sign up there. That's exciting. Yes. So you've been holding that a secret. I have. Um. It's, uh, <laughs> We have a lot of entries there already, and I haven't even mentioned it. So, guys, definitely, if you're in Europe, I know it's late there now. It's probably midnight. Uh, when you watch uh, it tomorrow, or if you really die hard, you're watching with yeah. us right now. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, our Water Rocks family is growing a lot over there. So, mm -hmm. sharing the love, and everyone seems to be enjoying the series. So, that's a nice little addition yeah. to that going on. Yeah, so. it's really good. 
So guys, again, thank you for tuning into this. This, is, this series is a lot of fun so far. Yeah, so anyone who's like uh, got their first tank or maybe just hasn't been a while, like, you know, when you talk about cycling, okay, what do I set up? I got water in here. What do I do next? Um, is you basically have to make sure your tank is cycled. And people are yeah. like, I don't really know what that means. It's you're establishing all the good bacteria so that whenever you get fish and livestock into your aquarium, you um, have the proper bacteria to break it down. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be testing for that. And what we did with the frag from the beginning, if you haven't seen it, check back on the episodes. We use live sand. Mm -hmm. We use a carob sea life rock, and that has like seeded bacteria on it. So whenever it goes in the water, that becomes um, away from dormant and into the water column yeah. and produces there. And we've also been um, adding bacteria into it and doing what we call a fishless cycle. And that's when you're not adding fish or anything into your the aquarium. You are because we don't want to have anything die. Is we are basically putting the bacteria and using a little bit of fish food to mm -hmm. make the waste product to work on the cycle. Back yep. in the day, it used to be you throw in some damsels, let them sit in there for a few months, yeah. do it that way. The old um, school method. Of this is a lot more and humane and, and faster yeah. this way. Yeah. So we're gonna test for that one, um, and we're just gonna do a quick test just to kind of show you what you're gonna looking for, do and don'ts. If, you mm -hmm. know when you want to proceed with what your water um, sample is. We had to grab some water from here. And then we'll just kind of just fill these up. And you can, there's a lot of different test kits out here. We use this one because it is very simple for just your um, ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate is all we are concerned with for our cycle process. I do want to mention me. you guys that are in here with us. There's a ton of people watching. Uh, and we're giving away a $50 gift card at the end of the stream. And you guys always ask, how do you win that? Well, participate. Send us some good questions. You know, give us some good feedback. Yeah. You know, and we're going to pick from, you know, you guys that are in here interacting with us um, to win that gift card. And again, the gift card is valid in the U.S., U.K., or E.U. Yep. So um, all your test kits is going to be different, so just follow directions. To... It is very important because every test kit is going to be... Um, Different methods. Some are going to have powder, some are liquid. Like I said, this one is just really simple um, mm -hmm. and easy. Do a quick shake. That's ammonia. Um, so what is ammonia? Basically, when you have fish food, fish waste, anything, it comes out as ammonia. One, two, try and count and talk. And um, <laughs> <laughs> so that's your first like byproduct. And that needs a certain bacteria to break down ammonia and it turns it into nitrite, which is what we just tested there. And then there's a certain bacteria that consumes nitrite mm -hmm. and turns it into nitrate, which is pretty much what you do water changes for to remove, because it's the byproduct of all waste. Um, so guys, this is a really important part of setting up an aquarium. I know it's probably one of the least fun parts. It's like waiting for the ammonia cycle, trying to get your tank established to the point where you can put corals or fish yeah. in it or something like that. But just Take your time with it. And also, aside from watching us show you this on the stream, hop on Google and learn about the ammonia cycle. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the first things you really should do and just kind of like understand that it's not that complex um, so that you can safely, you know, put animals in your tank. Yeah, so you can ready. do the testing. Also check out your local mm -hmm. fish store. They will a lot of times do the testing. And it's really good in the beginning too because they can help you guide you and understand yeah. um, of what you need or looking for or if one of these isn't within range, how to help you with that. So definitely rely on them. And we're testing for the nitrate right now. So um, ammonia and nitrite, which are the first two, are the most deadly. They're very toxic to any kind of livestock. So those really have to be in an absolute zero yeah. before you put any livestock in. Um, doesn't matter, crabs, snails, shrimp, fish, corals, um, absolute zero. Nitrate, you generally want to have in the low range 10 or less. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as a general rule, but you have to have, I can see that the angle of this makes it look very green, but it's actually very yellow um, for the ammonia. Yeah, <laughs> the angle. so yeah, we've tested this, again, we've been testing this for, what, a few weeks now? Just yeah, so it's been running sure for two weeks. We've been doing the fishless cycle of bacteria for that whole time, been testing along the way. I think the angle of the lights or whatever is giving that kind of like a green look to it, but. It's definitely not green. Definitely not green. Um, so we're looking, ammonia and nitrite have to be zero, not above whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Nitrate, generally 10 or less. That's whenever you're ready to move on and put some stuff into the aquarium, usually starting with inverts, just to softly yeah. start putting actual livestock in there. Um, and then, you know, if those levels are not zero, 
adding more bacteria, giving it more time, you know, that kind of yeah. stuff is generally going to be your remedy. So we've been testing it. It's been good for a while. Like I said, we use live sand and the life rock bacteria. We've been doing all the things to um, make sure that it's ready to go because we do want to add and some Jess crabs has and set up right a there. few aquariums in her life, so you know she's maybe yeah. like two or three. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> only um, two or three. Hundred not thousand, like I'm not really <laughs> sure. But um, so just kind of a general recap of it. You know, definitely check with your local fish store, look online for guidance um, if you're a little more confused or you're not sure what your readings yeah. are on there. Excellent. We got some crabs and snails picked up today to go into the frag for the very first livestock. There you go. And you guys, if you haven't checked out the frag series, hop on our website um, and check that out. It's great for a shallow reef. It's very similar to our reef series, but it's sh shorter. So if you want to, I, I love the uh, the viewing angles on it. Mm -hmm. You know, when you walk up to it, you you know you can see the from the front, and it's, with my height especially, I can see the top down view, which is neat. Yes, and it's cleared up a lot. Last week we did a check-in on it and we were like looking at equipment and fine-tuning all of it. And um, it was very cloudy from the bacteria on the life rock. Yeah. And we had a lot of micro bubbles still from the skimmer. So that's all dialed in. It's cleared up really, really nicely. And you can see the rock look all beautiful. I think we should go, oh, we Keenan a question. has a question. Yeah, we just, <clears throat> we just have a couple questions coming in. How long do you have to wait for the results to show? Um, it's going to depend on the test kit, but like this one in particular, the ammonia and the nitrate have to sit for five minutes. Um, the nitrite is usually pretty instant within a minute or two. So just follow depending on what test kit you're using because they're all different. Yeah. Another question is you mentioned the micro bubbles. Um, a person asking, how do you uh, get rid of micro bubbles? Our micro bubbles last week were because the skimmer was still breaking in. Mm -hmm. So when your skimmer is breaking in, usually you're going to have a lot of bubbles going into your aquarium. That does resolve whenever the um, skimmer calms down. If you're getting micro bubbles for another reason, it really depends on where they're coming from. Um, but you shouldn't have them in your aquarium once everything's kind of fine-tuned. Check your plumbing. Make sure you don't have water crashing. There's no equipment putting you know bubbles just into the column, having sponges in place between baffles and stuff. Yeah. Yep. Another question, any concerns about adding crabs or snails first? It seems like they wouldn't have enough time to, or anything to feed on. Um, well, for us, we have been putting fish food in there because there is, we've been doing the fishless cycle, so we're putting mm -hmm. waste product in there. So there is food that is like decayed in there. Um, there's, we're not putting a lot of snails and crabs in either. Yeah, but yeah. you do want to kind of start before you go and put in, you know, a little bit more expensive fish. Try with some snails and crabs, which are naturally going to clean the tank because there's still going to be some like algae that can grow. Mm -hmm. So that starts when your lights are on. Um, and then like the fish food and stuff that's gone in there has broken down to some kind of waste product. Yeah. And then we're just going to do that for like a week and then we add fish the following week and we'll still monitor as we go. Yeah. And I will tell you guys, don't underestimate a cleaning crew because uh, we just put a new cleaning crew in one of our tanks here recently. And mm -hmm. you would be amazed on how much that tank got cleaned up. Yes. Once you put a new cleanup crew in there. So you might think, well, you don't really think of it as kind of like an afterthought. Start Because I've right. done that in the past. Uh -huh. um, but definitely cleanup crews are so valuable when it comes to just keeping the rocks clean of algae and the glass and so on and so right. forth. Right. And it's easier to add them before you have a lot of algae and yeah. just let them, you know, do their Maintain natural it. work. Yeah. Um, you know, we are not going to go add, you know, 50 snails and 50 crabs today because... 40 of them each will pretty much die because there's not an else waste product. So you just add them appropriately. Don't go buy a big old cleaner pack and throw it into a brand new tank. Yeah, it's exactly. Not gonna Start go slow. Well. I say it all the time. It may sound repetitive, but, <laughs> but take it slow, you guys. It's, it's uh, there's nothing good happens fast in a saltwater aquarium. You got to take your time with it. These tanks are made to for you to have for years. So. Yeah, absolutely. I think one last question before mm -hmm. we head out there. This one's come up three or four times here. Do you have to quarantine the snails or the crabs? No, um, I would, no, no. <laughs> okay, I'm saying it because I'm sure people have done it, but they don't really carry disease. If you're getting them from a trusted source, you're not worrying about flatworms and stuff coming in mm -hmm. with them. Um, what I usually do is shake them off pretty good before mm -hmm. you put them into the tank. Don't go and pour the tank water that they came in with. Um, and we have been acclimating them for about 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. So do acclimate your snags and, uh, snails and crabs too. We use the drip method. You can also do like a little scoop and a little bit of water in. But you do want to make sure that you acclimate them to your tank. And then I just usually lift them out, shake them, and put them in. There's not much that they're going to carry with them if you're getting them from somewhere reliable. Yeah. Make sure you check out your sources where you're getting them from. Always. Um, if you look back through our streams, we've got a lot of good sources for those inverts. All right. It's time to put some snails and crabs in Let's the tank. Let's do it. 
tons of questions coming in about cleaning up crew. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys didn't uh, tune in to the last few weeks, you guys will be able to see here all the work we've done. We've installed all of the equipment, the MP40s, the lighting. We showed you how to program it. Yeah. We also installed the Versa, which we don't have hooked up to anything just yet. That's it's coming soon. Up. Yep, powered up um, and in place. Uh, we're hooking that up um, as we need it when we're adding corals and stuff in. And so what we've been doing is we've been drip acclimating the snails and crabs. I just took a little bit of airline tubing and put a knot in the end here, and you'll see it is dripping. So we've been doing this for the last 45 minutes. And what we did is essentially doubled the water volume that was in there. And this is giving them a chance to get used to temperature, salt level, you know, any kind of fluctuations that are different from where they're coming from. You're just going to help them transition to the tank a lot easier, less chance of them kind of dying off um, or having any issues with that. So we're going to take that out. Doo -doo -doo. And then I'm just going to put them in. So best bet is physically just go ahead and place them on something. If you throw your snails in, they're probably going to land upside down and either a crab is going to come eat them or they're going to kind of just die struggling to uh, upright themselves. Snails are not very good at that. So if they fall, they're kind of just stuck there most of the time. So we're just going to put them around the rock. There's not a lot in, of algae or anything in here, so just some general cleanup. I think we got like 10, 11 snails, probably around 10 hermit crabs, and two or three for the sand. Two. And that's it, placing them in. And then for about a week, you're going to be really excited to watch your snails and crabs because there's nothing else going on in here. Don't name them. They will be replaced <laughs> regularly. <laughs> that was one of the questions that came in is how long do does, does the cleanup crew usually last before you have to replace or add more? Um, how long does cleanup crew last? So it really depends. It's, it's kind of a rough world when you're a snail or a crab because the other snails and crabs will eat you um, sometimes. And I usually just tell people, you know, every month or two, just kind of check where you're at with how many you have. And if you've lost a couple, just go replace them um, and add them. You know, every month or two, add some more of whatever you've kind of dwindled down on. Yeah. Because the numbers will drop. You'll find empty shells. They'll eat each other. They'll get stuck. You know, it's just things that'll happen. Hermit crabs can usually write themselves over, so you can kind of just sprinkle them in. And... They will make their way around where they want to. These are ones are actually little sand snails, some hermits. Ah. And that is it. Your inverts are in. Just like that. Just like that. So, so a lot of people are loving the tank. They said it looks amazing how much work we've done to it already. Um, we do kind of make it look a little easy. But, you know, we're giving you guys a high-level overview how to set up a, a reef aquarium with our frag series. This could pertain to any of our series, really. So definitely uh, take a look back through all the episodes that we've done thus far and um, also I always say do your own research too you know mm -hmm. we're, we're giving you a high level overview there's a lot that goes into this this hobby and, uh, and there's a lot of ways to do everything so just because we do it one way doesn't mean that is necessarily the only way um, it's what over my years and your years that we have found this work right. for us or in this scenario works best um, you know so there's a ton of ways to do it just the general practices of cycling your tank properly mm -hmm. and using the right amount of equipment and stuff is really your key important things. We're just showing you some of the, I, I think, in our opinion, like the best choices of equipment. And yeah, and we, we loaded this frag down. We have all Ecotech equipment. We got the Nio skimmer on there. I mean, we didn't, we didn't spare any expenses, Jeff. No, this is definitely um, a top-notch frag. It is going to be really awesome. But, you know, we're doing a top notch as far as the tank, the equipment, and then also the livestock. Right. So it all kind of goes together perfectly. Yeah. Um, you know, if anyone hasn't really seen it before is that we are um, with Worldwide Corals mm -hmm. and they are providing the fish and corals in there. If they don't know, if you don't know of them, they've got some of the nicest yes. stuff. And um, you know, this tank is definitely gonna be well, well stocked by 
worldwide. Yeah, and so you guys, worldwide corals is, they have very, very nice corals. They also have a lot of high-end corals. But all, the most importantly, they use all radions in their farm and in their facility. So it really kind of makes a lot of sense that we're doing this because we're using worldwide corals. Mm -hmm. Corals, we're using a very similar lighting schedule that they're using. So and we're using all the top-notch Ecotech equipment. So. Yeah. And if you don't know that this Ecotech equipment is now available on our website. So if you want to buy a water box aquarium and pair it with radions, they are available. All so. together and I'll ship together to you. Um, and speaking of worldwide, we're actually, because the stocking of fish and everything starts next week, we'll actually mm -hmm. be visiting them this weekend. Yeah, pending a potential tropical storm. There's a possible tropical storm hurricane. coming our way. <laughs> um, if it's drivable and we can get there, we will be on site at Worldwide. We will be picking out fish and livestock that's going to be coming to this tank. Yeah. Um, so you'll be able to kind of get a sneak peek with us yeah. as we show you, you know, our visit and stuff. So that's planned for this weekend. And then next Wednesday, fish. Yeah. And that is always exciting. Yeah. So love to know what people think would be some good uh, fish choices in here. I always love to see people's opinions. Um, you know, some favorite stuff for something that's kind of like a shallow reef. We're going to yeah. have, you know, nice flowy corals. Um, and we do have to make sure, of course, the first batch of fish is not something that is super sensitive. So we have to choose wisely, and we'll go over that as we add fish and stuff, yeah. too. I think it's time for Ask Jess. Is it? Oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no one you know, is funny ready is I for actually, that. I actually said that because I was like, Keenan doesn't know it's time. <laughs> <laughs> This is a segment that we call Ask Jess. If you don't know about it, we take your questions by emailing, you guys emailing uh, askjess at waterboxaquariums.com and we answer them live here with all of Jess's knowledges. Share the knowledges. And, um, if we don't get to them live, she will answer them through the email as well. Yeah, so. so just send in your questions, happy to help. Plethora of information up here, might as well let it out. <laughs> No worries. Nope. So, all right, this is from Brandon. He says, hey, Jess, love watching this frag series as I'm using the same equipment with the 130.4, which is on its way this week. Yay! That's awesome. I want to add the UV, a UV, uh, and was wondering if I can run it off the manifold and return it back into the return or the skimmer area. What would you do? Yes, so definitely run it in line with your return pump. It's going to be the easiest, so you're not mm -hmm. running another um, pump. Yeah. to like in your tank, which means more heat, more electricity, running off your main pump with a manifold type situation. And then you do want to dump it back in, not right where it's taking from. So if your return pump is feeding your uh, UV sterilizer, don't have the UV dump right back into the return pump because then mm. you're sterilizing the same yeah. water. You would want to put it maybe further up the sump or, um, you know, that would say, yeah, like at the beginning of the sump, so it yeah. is mixing and it's not just kind of rotating the same water. That's a good point. I never, I never actually thought of that. Yeah, you don't want to sterilize the, the same water the over and over. Water <laughs> right back into the sterilizer. <laughs> not very efficient. Not at all. <laughs> all righty. So, all right, the next one's from Scott. He says, hey, Jess, I'm planning on setting up a reef tank, 100 gallons or more, once I move into my house later this year. I see you, choosing, I see you chose to use the Carib Sea Life Rock over live rock uh been a freshwater guy for a while but looking to go big with my first tank hoping for your benefits versus negatives of each so i can sway one way or another love the videos you guys do and have been doing the past year so thank you thank you um you do have a lot of benefits and not even not necessarily even negatives on either one um mm -hmm. if you're looking at why we generally use carib sea a lot of the times or some kind of dry rock is it is a lot easier to work with because it's dry you don't have to worry about how long it's out of the water and um, the shapes are pretty much predetermined so you can kind of work with them that way we've found that the life rock the arches and all that stuff really makes some pretty cool aquascapes whereas with live rock is it's hard to find really unique pieces a lot of times mm -hmm. live rock is a little bit more just round and bulky you can kind of get sometimes some that's a little bit branchy it's just really hard to find and um, I also like that dry rock is sustainable and it's not coming from the oceans. Yeah. So environmentally, it's very beneficial to not use live rock. Yeah. 
Um, however, some benefits that Live Rock has is you're bringing a lot more biodiversity. You know, yeah. a lot more microfauna in. Um, you know, you can find some very unique stuff that you might not find with everyone else because they have the same kind of dry yeah. rock. Um, but you also can bring in a lot of bad stuff on your live rock. Mm -hmm. So I like the environmental side of it and the ease of use I do. to use I do the life too. rock. And the life rock has bacteria, so it helps your yeah. tank cycle I, anyway. I typically, personally, I always lean towards the uh, man-made rock, mostly because I can't get past like how, how much more sustainable it is. Yeah. So like I just automatically lean towards the, the man-made rock. Like she said, there's a lot of benefits to the live rock. Not all live rock is created equal. I mean, Definitely whether it's not. brought in by boat or by air or how dense it is, mm -hmm. there's so many factors that go into it. And not only that, if you're not hand picking it out of a retail store, which is sometimes hard to do, you're rolling the dice. What the man made rock, especially the Carib Sea, these are predetermined shapes that are making multiple over and over and over again. So yeah. you can really pick out which shapes you want and go from there. Yeah. So, okay. This is Ask Jess, you guys, not Ask Richard. Man, he is, he's very, he has very opinion on the rock. He's like, I got to give my opinion here. We know that where you stand. Um, all right, so this is from Devin. He said, I was just curious as to why the frag doesn't have a refugium, a.k.a. fuge, as we call it, built into the sump. Refugiums tend to have a ton of benefits for coral and make a great place for copepods to take shelter and grow. So um, our larger models do have a refugium plate that you can put in to have a designated spot. And the reason that you're not going to find it in the like four foot and under is just simply space in the sump that we don't want to determine what your skimmer size area and all that's going to be. Um, you can definitely make your own, mm -hmm. put your own in there, use the ATO chamber. You can see in our user group on Facebook, there's tons of people that have yeah. done their own modifications. But purely we want you to have enough room to put all the sump skimmers and reactors in there. Uh, whereas like your sumps on the pros and peninsulas are just larger. Yeah. So it's more ability. I gotta get my opinion on this one too. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna change our jingle. It's gonna be Ask Jess and Rich. <laughs> I prefer to go without a refugium. <laughs> Typically for me and my experience and many people's tanks that I've seen and or been around, they just turn into a big mess. Yeah, I don't generally run them. Um, <laughs> I do. That's the truth. <laughs> well, I mean, on our pro here, we don't have the refugium yeah. rather. Than. We skimmer, just do a big water skimmer. Water changes. It is personal preference. Um, yeah. Are they beneficial? Yes. Are they extra work? Yes. So it's really up to personal choice on that It one. is, and that's why we, we were saying earlier, there's a ton of different ways to, to manage and maintain these aquariums. Mm -hmm. Find what works. And even on the big ones, it's a removable plate, so you can mm -hmm. or cannot use it. Yeah. So we don't make sure that you know. Yeah, it's there's just more so room many. in those sumps, so you can, there's room for it. Um, yes. But you can still modify the, like you said, the small I've seen tons of people do it. Yeah. Yeah, check out the user group on Facebook. So, all right, I think Keenan looks like he's got questions from... Questions galore. Yeah, we've got, Chat plenty, is busy. Of, we've got plenty of questions, and I think it's pretty cool that uh, some questions are being answered by other users in the chat. So oh, very yeah. cool. I think that's yeah. awesome. That is nice. Um, <laughs> this was a funny one. How do you start a siphon on the tube? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, there's a couple ways to do it. If you want to be more... Um, I don't know what the word is, but you can either completely submerge the hose, pull one out with your finger over it and pull it out, or honestly, you have one end in and, yeah, and you, you suck can, on the other one. Yeah, you can, you you can start to siphon, siphon with your mouth if you live a dangerous life. If you live a dangerous life. Yeah, you know this long <laughs> enough, that's just the way I do it. We have others in the office that refuse to I've, do it that I've, way. I've, I've done it that way in the past, and I have taken in some salt water. So I have, just and after the first while, you learn, and yeah, now it's like yeah, I can yeah, do it exactly. without. <clears throat> All right, next question. Um, is there a rule of thumb for how many, how much cleanup crew you put per gallon? <clears throat> Not really one that I could put out there. It depends because like if you were using live rock, mm -hmm. you would probably have more debris, more algae and stuff like that that came in with it. You would need more cleanup crew originally. Um, <clears throat> sorry, so, and it's just, it depends on your type of snails, your type of hermit. So I don't really have a general rule. Yeah. It's kind of tough. You got to just gauge it on what you need. If you run your lights too much, if your nutrients are too high, you're going to need more inverts versus if you tank yeah. the cleaner. Yeah, that's true. It depends. It also, when you're reintroducing more inverts into your system to kind of replenish them, yeah. it depends on how dirty your tank is because maybe you put less in the first time, now you need more. So yeah. it's very variable. Very much so. Yeah. Yep. Okay, is there any benefit to using half life rock and half live rock? You definitely could. It give you kind of the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. um, like we were saying before, just be really careful with live rock because it can bring in bad as well as good. 
Um, so do know where you are getting it from, that it's been cured properly, and that it's not going to have pests or, you know, bad algae, aptasia, things like that on it. All right, Keenan says that's good. <laughs> Chad said don't drink the salt water from your... Yeah, there's a bunch of comments cup. about the water. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Depends on how you want to live, I don't know. All but. right, you guys, time's almost up, but we do have a winner here of our $50 gift card. Ooh. From right. Facebook. All right, hold on, drum roll. Oh. The winner is... gift card available Boom. in the US, UK, or EU. Come on now. Uh, Fifty dollars to Laura Towles Fergus on Facebook. So Woo! congratulations, Laura. That's awesome. We're giving you guys something away every single week, as well as a multi-thousand-dollar frag system. Yes. So reach out to support at waterboxaquariums.com. They will get you hooked up with your gift card um, and all that taken care of. We've got lots of fun stuff coming. We are finally going to put some swimming things into the some frag. Life. Some life into the frag next week uh visiting worldwide this weekend the peninsula mini is being seen all over oh man um if you're not part of our user group on facebook you have to join it at tons of beautiful pictures going up right now of clears i mean reefs i mean there's a lot of water boxes you know are out there right now and the peninsula mini is sighted everywhere yeah. and they're looking they're starting amazing to hit, they're, they're starting, starting to, to get hit filled. people's houses it's yeah. awesome yeah, so, so definitely check out that group you guys if, you're, if you've been considering getting a water box for a while, that's the place to go to make your decision. There's a ton of water box family mm -hmm. in there, a um, ton joining every day. I think there's going on 8,000 people in there now. So definitely hop on over there. Again, like, sh share, and subscribe to our channels. Yeah. Hit the notifications because we are here every single week. Rain or shine. <laughs> As long as we got We're an internet inside connection. We're a building. We're good. <laughs> yeah. um, it's yeah. it's, it's it, Florida. It's pretty much always rain and shine yeah. together at the same generator. time. It doesn't mean we'll have internet, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> I looked like Keenan. I have a margarita. No? Oh, no. No, I thought you left it up to the microphone. Okay. Earlier, well, I'll throw it out there. Okay. All right, we got another yeah, question. I saw a question related to the Peninsula Mini, and you were talking about Okay. Is um, somebody added an ATO system outside of the Peninsula mm -hmm. Mini? What chamber should the water flow into? Your sensor should go in where the return pump chamber is, and ideally your um, return water should be there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, because you want, with that small of a back area, if you put it too far down in the other chambers, it's going to take a while for the sensor to then tell the pump. Mm -hmm. that the water has reached it and you might probably overfill. So pretty much your sensor and your refill in the pump chamber. Cool. Right. Coolio. Coolio, you guys. All right. We will see you all next week. Right, yeah. Chris? Yeah, for the frag continues. Bye. See you next week.